had to, we had, Allstate, they they called this homeowner three times just to tell them how big of a scam artist we are and we're we're overcharging and we're not sending them photos. The homeowner read us a hamlet and letter and says, listen, listen here, I'm tired of your shit, I'm tired of your lies. I, you know, just, just do what the contractor says so I can get my house done. And I'm tired of this. No joke. Know. Well, in that book, I'd never heard of that book, but the one that Robert Alvarez recommended, I, I read just like, the right. description. I was like, holy shit. Like, this is information people need to know, you know? Yeah. I just want to sort of just hand it out of the door, guys. It's not a big deal. I just bought it. You know, I got five or ten of them in the truck. It's no joke. Like, why don't you borrow this over the weekend, Mrs. Jones? Just get your morning <laughs> coffee, read about Allstate. Well, and you know what's yeah. funny is, I haven't done this, obviously, because I just heard about the book, but I wonder what would happen if during Allstate negotiations, if you just took a screenshot of the information that that book provides about the greed and the numbers and stuff like that, if the homeowner sent it in, what that would do. Yeah, but you know, um, the funny thing is, is they can do that with any company. If you look at like Mastercraft and all those guys, I mean, you, you, if you dug deep enough, you know, there, you know, there, there, there's enough scummy things that every business owner has to do in the history of their company. And, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's all about profit. That's but why we're in business. Is, why businesses are in business. But, you know. But the, but the problem is, is if you're in a deal with a company, and, and like. You know, all you know, all state where they're collecting. You know, I imagine since 2004 was the last time I read on that book thing. They 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 collected some like 14 billion dollars in profit, and they're going after the taxpayers to pay their you know employees bonuses. for bonuses. Yeah. I'm you know, I'm going. I don't understand why you can't pay for ridge cap. It's two hundred and thirty-eight dollars, you asshole. <laughs> yeah. But, but but here lies the problem. By not doing that one specific thing, you know, they save themselves. You know, let's say that they do, you know, four, you know, fourteen hundred claims in Colorado alone. The la at the last, you know, the last bell or whatever they call it, there was two hundred and seventy some odd claims made in just October. Well. And you look, I say this all the time, like the reason that adjusters have these ready to go rebuttals for the dumbest stuff, like Ridge and Starter, when you look at your average Ridge and Starter claim, it's literally anywhere between $200 and $400 most of the time on a 25 square house. I mean, it's not gonna be that much. But so yeah. we're like, why do, they, why do they give a shit? But the point that you just made is something I share all the time when we talk about supplements is Hail damage alone every year is a billion dollar a year industry just for hail claims. So if your adjusters can shave off or get out of or excuse away or objectify 1% of each claim that they write, 1%, that's $100 off of your average $10,000 claim, that saves insurance companies $100 million a year. Mm -hmm. So that's why they have all these canned rebuttals and excuses for things that it's like, why? Well, what's the easiest way to save that 1%? Shave off stuff that's on every claim. Ridge and starter. Overhead and profit. I love, yeah, I love the crap when they start getting into it's against our pol it's against our policy. We 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 can't do we can't do it. It's it's against our policy. It's okay, fine. Send me something written, you know, in your, you know, send me a copy of just the article in your policy that states why you can't, you know, put this in here, even though it's part of the room. Then they don't, <clears> they can't me. produce it. They're like, mm -hmm. uh, uh. It doesn't exist. Exactly. And that's another thing that I have in here is, uh, I talk about anyways, so maybe I haven't written a letter for it. But if you have the customer send in a letter that just says, you know, requesting in writing why they are denying per their policy, their HO3 or their HO5, whatever it is that they've got. It's like, can you provide with me in writing why you're denying this on my scope? And they can't. And that puts them in a corner because either they can produce it, which, okay, fine, we're not owed it. Or they can't, and then they have no choice but to pay for it. Because they don't have a leg to stand on, you know, with their denial.